Hello everyone, Alex Camilio here, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with AgentInnerCircle.com and I have a special treat for you today. Um, we have a friend and real estate agent, uh, Kenny Klaus, with us. Um, Kenny is an absolute expert when it comes to iBuyers and from what we're seeing, um, there are a lot of markets out there that are absolutely sleeping on cash offers, iBuyers, um, how you can use it in your tool belt. Uh, a lot of people are worried that like they're going to come sort of eat your lunch. Um, we're here to tell you that's not the case. People, they're not, iBuyers are not coming here to eat your lunch. In fact, um, we're here to talk about how you can use it uh, in your tool belt to make more money. So first of all, um, Kenny, would you mind introducing yourself, uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, um, and then how you got into this whole iBuyer world to begin with? Well, first of all, when you speak about <clears throat> them eating your lunch, what I would actually recommend is go eat lunch with them and get to know them a little bit first, quite honestly. Um, stay in curiosity, ask questions, and that's how we get better data versus opinions. Because I think this is one of the most opinionated uh, topics right now when you look at forums and Facebook and that. So but anyway, yeah, I'm Kenny Klaus out here in uh, sunny Arizona. Of course, this is the time of year to be out here. Uh, celebrate my 20th year in the real estate business. Uh, we've got a team of about 22, 23 people. Um, one thing I think we're proud of because the Phoenix market seems to be the uh, launching ground for all this different tech. And we've had all the major swings of the real estate market. When you talk about short sale, foreclosure, investors, and now we had about two years of kind of normal. And then now we've got, you know, heavy eye buyer. And our team is, we've averaged a home sold a day now going into our 11th year in a row. And just something I'm proud of. And I think the reason that we've, we've had that success, honestly, is, just visioning and adapting to the market quicker than, um, you know, a lot of people, they, they spend too much time kind of analyzing it. Is this going to work? Is it not going to work? And I'm going, it's happening. We just need to jump in and start understanding it first. <clears throat> Getting educated around it is really second and then really taking action on it. And, you know, I look back at the short sale market for me was a big market here and I didn't want anything to do with it. Like I, feel like a lot of these agents with the eye buyer where I had my head in the sand and was like, nah, you know, I don't need to do that stuff or this. And then that thing came along called CDPE, Certified Distressed Property Expert, which really unified us, I think, as an industry on how to really do a short sale. And next thing you know, we were teaching classes on it and it became a huge part of our business and really helping, helping you know, guide the consumer through all their different options. It's really no different today except it's positive. People are buying and selling real estate and we're actually, sales prices are up and we're getting, we're getting paid. So it's a, a lot more fun time, but man, I'm excited to kind of share the message. Um, we're in our sixth year of dealing with really the iBuyer market or heading into, they, they launched in 2014. And so, um, you know, now we're knee deep in it. We've got them all, all of them out here. A lot of the ones you haven't even heard of yet. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So it sounds it's like, awesome, it's, it's well, happening. it's, it's happening. It's definitely yeah. happening. Um, and what's awesome about it though, I think is that, you know, the, uh, the education and embracing of it where, you know, you're, you get a little fearful of something, you're not sure about it. And you're like, okay, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to learn about it. And then once you do learn about it, you're like, okay, it's time to embrace this because there's opportunity now that, um, now that I have learned about, you know, whatever this market is that we're getting into. Before we get into that, though, I think there are probably not enough folks out there who even know what iBuyers are, what role they play in a deal, how that whole thing works. Um, do you mind giving people just sort of like the quick overview of what is an iBuyer, what it means, what, what it's done to the market, what it's done to your market, just the sort of the basics um, so people have an understanding. Yeah, so an iBuyer, and just to be clear too, that's an industry term. So the consumers don't necessarily know that. They know the brands. And so if I said like the big three, what we, we term the acronym Zoo, right? Zillow, Open Door, OfferPad are really the three. So Open Door got in first, OfferPad followed a couple years later, and Zillow's about eight, nine months in the Phoenix market, and they just announced a bunch more markets that they're launching, like Oklahoma City, uh, I know Tucson, um, uh, anyway, a bunch of different cities that they're coming to in, in the first quarter. So an eye buyer is really, if you just think about it and drop the eye, they're really just a buyer. And they're looking to come in and they have a specific buy box, which by the way, they tell you what that buy box is right on their website. 
and then they just want to be they want to buy property and so it's interesting when i travel and teach i always say hey you know if i had a cash buyer referral for you in your state would you be interested in that referral and everybody's like well hell yeah send me that lead send it to me like well you already have them right they are they want to buy property and they tell you which properties they want to buy and so you just got to figure out do i think they're good bad for my business and when you look at it that way and that's the mindset i had in the beginning was oh they're low ballers they're not making any money they're trying to take us out and i got very negative about them and then when i sat down and i really did sit down and have lunch first with open door and i understood their model and really what their need was for the agent still too and i think that that's only become more um they become more aware of working with agents instead of feeling like against because they realize that they really do need us because the thing that we have that they don't is the trust and the relationships and we're the foot soldiers on the ground it it truly i mean i the reason i'm spending my time with you today with our with our industry is that i really think it's a massive massive opportunity in the real estate market to sell a bunch more homes help a bunch more people as soon as you understand how to use this as a tool and really get your head out of the sand and just really get to understand it because if you think about it you know we're not the gatekeepers of information anymore we used to be we used to own search if someone wanted to see a house they went through us sometime after 2006 we lost that to zillow you know cmas are dead meaning online like hey do you want your home value people aren't doing that they can go online and put in their address and get home value so with the i buyers and i don't know about you but i don't have the marketing budget that they have and I can't hide them from the consumer. So if I don't talk about Open Door of Zillow to my database, at parties, in, you know, in neighborhoods, at open houses, at things, then I'm really doing a disservice because they think I'm up to something or maybe not telling them the whole truth. So I think when you understand how many ways that <coughs> you think about having a cash buyer, what could you do with a cash buyer that wanted to buy properties? And for a lot of agents, they go, ah, it's starting to make some sense. I have this tool now. Yep. So when you talk about taking a listing, we talk about door knocking, we talk about, you know, circle prospecting. I mean, you have a buyer and you know they want to buy properties in those areas that fit their buy box. It's really a pretty, pretty massive opportunity, in my opinion. And by the way, these are non-emotional cash buyers. Yes. These guys are not changing their mind, having a bad day. Like they just want to buy property. That's awesome. I mean, that's great. It's, it's, uh, I know this is something we had talked about a little bit before, um, where it's like, you know, years ago, 10, 15 years ago, if you said to any agent, Hey, don't you wish you had five cash buyers in your back pocket? They'd all be going, yes, of course I would. Like who wouldn't want, you know, a bunch of cash buyers in your back pocket. Now it's like, okay, well you have them. And they're like, whoa, 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 right. whoa. You know, um, so, but it, it seems like the message, the more you know, the moral of the story that we're getting here is that it's a lot better to um, to work with as opposed to against, to embrace it and bring it into your business. Um, now, let me, I, I guess, let me dive into a couple questions with that. First of all, you mentioned something called their buy box. I'm guessing, and just for the folks that don't deal with investment a lot and that sort of stuff, essentially, it's the um, types of property, especially the pricing of the types of property that these I buyers, the, essentially the cash offer buyers want to purchase. They're not looking specifically for luxury homes in a specific market. And it'll be different for every market. Um, but like you said, Kenny, they tell you that right up front, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so the, the buy box is just nothing more than their parameter. So, hey, we want, you know, 1960 and newer. We want less than half acre, no lease solar. Um, you know, there's obviously price caps, uh, you know, maybe condos versus not condos that they'll buy. So they're very specific to, you know, not active adult communities. So they tell you. And one thing, too, I want to clarify up front because we're going to spend today talking about iBuyers and I'm going to seem a little bit um, like pro iBuyer. I'm not at all. I, I'm, I'm really pro realtor and ultimately pro consumer choice, which is really what, what we're going to be talking about getting to but we just had to have a choice out here. I mean, we have, we have so many of them and there's so much awareness to it that I had to get in and understand it. And so I'm teaching agents more on, here's how to use it as a tool. Here's, here's who they are. You can choose if you think they're good or bad. And by the way, 
I wish they would, would all go out of business and go away like the rest of you. I really do. Um, I'd find my own cash buyers. The reality of it is, is I don't believe they are. And I don't know that we won't see this for the future of real estate because of the, you know, the, the, the they've solved the biggest pain point in buying and selling real estate. Yep. Um, there's, there's, there's comments already that we actually think the average across the country, people will move two more times in their lifetime because of product like this, because they're free to move quicker and easier. It's not the, it's not the life event where, oh, we got to get the home ready. We got to replace all the car. We got to have showings. I mean, it's literally, they walk into new construction. They like the house. They go back, get an offer. Their house is sold and they're, they're closing on their new house. And so they've eliminated some of those pain points. I just want to make sure I am an agent and I make my living <laughs> buying right. and selling property. I'm not trying to sell everything to them. It just happens to be, you know, a place that, I don't have a choice. And if the consumer's demand is what's driving this, not me. Absolutely. Well, and, and I sort of think about it as, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, just because you had, even the agents who had those cash offer buyers in their back pocket, it doesn't mean the sellers chose those cash offer buyers, right? It's like your job at the end of the day is to be that advisor that is doing the best job that they can for their client to, you know, sell for the most money in the least amount of time. And it's that, you know, balance of what is that? Sometimes the least amount of time and the most money you're going to get for that shortest period is whatever cash offer from somebody. But many times it's not. I know um, like Phoenix, I know some markets where we're seeing some of the biggest, you know, penetration for it is like 15-ish percent of the market, 10 to 15 percent at its sort of cap yeah. um, for the, the size of the market it's taking over. But that being said, I, I kind of wanted to get into... So you, you talked about this a little bit in terms of working with them, including it as part of how you're working with, um, with a seller. Talk, talk to us a little bit about where you included in the process and then more specifically, how do you as the agent make money from working or, or representing or recommending or whatever it might be, how you work it into the process? Yeah, so I mean, great question. So what, what we normally you know, when we first started this journey, so you're getting the four years of pain that I'm able to share. And then the last two years of, of really more success back in our business with it. But to kind of share when we first got this, we didn't talk about them. And we just went to a listing appointment. And then in some cases, what happens, we started not getting the call back. And then all of a sudden, the tax records would change and they bought it. And we're like, but they didn't even bring it up. Like they didn't even ask about that. And then all of a sudden we said, well, we got to quit looking out the window and look in the mirror. Whose fault is it that they went that route? Did we even mention it? Did we talk about it? So it didn't feel like full transparency. Then we started talking about it. And all of a sudden they'd get up off the couch and go into the kitchen and pull the offers out of the drawer. They already had them. And that's when we went, wow, like people are doing this before we even get there. So then we just started changing our messaging um, and we started saying, well, we can get you instant offers. Then we just started saying, Hey, have you heard of companies like open door? You know, we work with all these guys and <coughs> we gave them a bunch of benefits of why working with us made more sense. So then we'd show up to the house, which was really a fact finding mission. And we would have offer conversations more so than even a listing presentation and say, Hey, we're just going to take a couple quick pictures. Um, we're going to get you a, a sell now as well as a list now offer. And then in about 24 to 48 hours, we'll get back together and then review them and decide what's best for you. We show what commissions we're getting, full transparency. And what we found is 100% of the time, we were getting a second appointment. So if they were interviewing two or three agents, we were always getting the at bat because they wanted to see what the offer was going to look like. So then we started realizing, man, people are taking this even at a 12% fee but yet they beat me up over 1% on a commission. I went, why are they doing this? And I realized pretty quickly that, you know, we, we never had any other option for them except to go to market. Now we have this other option. And it turns out that if I asked, if, I, if you did a poll on your thing, what do you think the most important thing that a consumer wants out of their house? I can tell you it'd be a landslide as much money as they can for their house. <coughs> Mm -hmm. What the I, I buyer is proving is that the most money isn't always what's most important to them. And what could be what we call the three C's, which would be your, your certainty, your control, and the convenience. 
And when those three factors come into play, people are willing to take less to have those certainty, that control of when it's going to close, the convenience of not having to have showings. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, that was worth 20,000 of your equity. I didn't know that because you mm. wanted to price it so high. I would have never thought you would take that offer. But keep in mind, we've never sat at the kitchen table pre-market and had a cash offer where they can pick the closing date and only have to have an inspection. And that was my aha. I was going, wow, like I would even consider doing that. If I've got 200,000 equity in my house and I end up walking away with 20,000 less than if I would have went to market, but I could go buy that other home or I could get out of state when I needed to, or you know, I was more competitive to go make an offer on another property. That's not, not the worst thing because equity to me is like found money. It's almost like chips in Vegas, right? Like when you go to Vegas, they don't give you, when you give them cash, they don't give you change. They give you chips and they remove all the emotion and you just throw chips out there. Equity is like found money. And I don't know that people, if it was coming out of their bank account being debited, probably look at it differently. But when it's just like equity, I don't think they see it the same. And that was a big aha because I always thought, well, there's no way. They want as much as they can for their house. This will never, never work. And all of a sudden they started taking 2% market share, 6% market share, 12% market share. And in where I farm and work, we're probably 25, 28% market share now. Like it's high, it's, it's ridiculous. But it's because I'm in that buy box where, you know, the consumer, we know at least 40% of our consumers are already getting the offer before we even get to the table. Wow. We have to talk about it. And by the way, you know, there's, there's that, there's that issue of, fiduciary and doing everything we can for our client and finding offers. Like if we don't talk about this stuff and yet they're seeing it on every social media ad, radio, TV, billboards, it almost looks like we're hiding something. And it felt a lot better just to have the conversation. And a lot of times they'd go, Oh, of course, I'm I'm glad you guys know all about that stuff. Can you help us with all that stuff too? Like they don't want to deal with all that if they don't have to, Mm -hmm. but if we don't give them, you know, like if we're going down the road and we make them choose, you know, one way to, to realtor and the other way to I buyer. <coughs> they're always going to choose the I buyer first just to see. Then they'll call an agent. Well, what I'm trying to teach and show people is just don't make them have to change lanes or to do anything different. Just use their agent that they've always trusted and liked that will help guide them through. And that's where I think our, our shift has really been is really more of an advisory role than anything we've ever done before. But we never, you know, we always coach them through getting the house ready. So we still have all that. But now we have, here's, here's seven different choices for you. Here's a couple instant offers. Here's a go to market. You know, here's even a refinance. If you want to refinance your own, like there's so many things that we can add where the, the consumer just feels like you're not all there all about your commission. You're actually there to serve them. Yep. I, you know, it's interesting, Kenny. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm sitting here. My mind is going toward uh, <clears throat> doing something like running an ad toward consumers going, you know, do you need help making sense of that Zillow open door or whatever offer kind of like straight up advertisements going like, I'm the concierge, I'm the advisor here to help you with the thing that I already know that you've got. Yes. And and, and that's one of our marketings is, you know, confused on selling into today's market. Hell, I know I am. And I'm, and I'm a realtor. (laughs) The great news is is I go study all this. I protect your identity. That's a big one people like because they're not having to submit their email and their phone number. We're doing it on their behalf. Nice. Plus we have that fear of missing out. Like, Hey, and there's other iBuyers or all instant offers that you may not even know about local ones. So I'm going to get all those for you, put them together in a side by side comparison, as well as a go to market offer. Then you pick whatever's in your best interest. Doesn't matter to me. It's what's best for you. But either way, I'll be there to guide you through the process. So it's awesome. It's a, it's a pretty massive opportunity because we have a great message. You know, you know, there's a lot of guys and gals out there that did guaranteed sale, and that was to get lead generation. You have a guaranteed offer program. The difference is you actually have the offer. Like you can actually go bring them something, not piss them off when you know you're going to tell them the guaranteed offer price. Um, so it's really it. Once agents that like we have a little program we started teaching agents throughout the country, a little certification. And once we started getting people into the class, they started understanding it. All of a sudden they're sharing stories about how they've increased their business because they're not afraid of this anymore. They just are continuing to get educated. And I think that's the problem I've seen is too many agents have read social media posts. I was teaching 
this week uh, down south of us here, and an agent said, well, I heard that they, you know, come back on the inspection and do this, this, and this. And I said, well, who'd you hear that from? Like, well, so-and-so, well, did, did it happen to them? Well, no, they had, had it from a friend. Okay, did you see evidence of it? Because I haven't, we've done hundreds of these and I haven't seen that. Now, four years ago, yeah, their inspections were different. Normally what I see is somebody puts in the wrong thing. They clicked, you know, an extra half bath when there was only two baths, not two and a half. So when they get to the house, they got to recorrect the input. But normally it's not like, they're not coming out to beat you up. They're spending money. They, they you know, right. um, I had- yeah, I mean, that, their, right. their incent, I was just gonna say, their incentive is for this to go as smooth as possible. In fact, that's their overhead operating costs that they're trying to get rid of. The, the lower their over, overhead operating cost becomes, the more profitable they become because they already know the math for what the market is going to bear on these offers that they're making. Really, yeah. what they're trying to do now is shrink that down. So they're they're not incentivized to do that whatsoever. I don't see that being. Well, a, and so you know too, they actually uh, they don't really mind um, an agent being involved. And why I say that is because. Um, two of the three big ones pay a referral fee if you bring them a client. They'll pay you a 1% referral fee. Zillow doesn't pay anything currently. Um, and so they actually see the value because of the trust, because <coughs> of the customer service, because now you're doing all the customer service with your clients and you're reducing their labor costs. And their conversion rate actually goes up quite a bit when an agent's involved. And then guess what? Your client, a lot of time, you know, we know 62% of the time they're going to go buy another home. Mm -hmm. So you just don't want to lose that whole, that whole opportunity because your client didn't think that you were their trusted advisor and give them all their options. Gotcha. So I want, <clears throat> I want you to paint a, a really like broad strokes picture of, of the, uh, so we talked a little bit, you just talked a little bit about it, about people making referrals and getting the 1% from, um, from some of the folks. You kind of mentioned, you know, working with these people who are now gonna go buy another home. To me, that sounds like, hey, I can make money here. So, in in really just focused terms, where does an agent make beyond that one percent referral? Where does an agent make money and add money to their bottom line um, from this? And then I'll, I'm gonna get into asking you a little bit more about the the certification course that you guys do after that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as far as making money, I mean, a commission is always a tough conversation, but um, you know, you'll end up with a, a signed listing agreement with them. So, you know, just like we have a flexible commission program where different, different tiers for different levels of service in a sense, um, you know, if they're buying and selling and all these different things. So, you know, if it's an instant offer, we just have a di different tiered commission program than if it was, we go to market. And so sometimes we may just take the, you know, the referral fee, but yet you have a signed ER. So like with Zillow, You've got to figure out what that, you know, what that commission would look like if you sold direct to an instant offer. So the seller still, you know, can pay you just like you would with a regular listing. There's no difference there. And then, of course, whatever you get on the buy side. So it just moves the speed of the transaction too. Like if you have a seller, of course, what do they usually? They want to go look at homes, and you're like, well, hey, before we do that, let me just get you an instant offer. Let's see what that looks like because if you go out and find you a home then we can accept that instant offer and I'll talk to the other agent and let them know it's really non content. It's even though it's contingent, it's really not because we have a non emotional cash buyer and we use that all the time. And agents are like, Oh, you, those guys are buying it. Okay. And new construction. I was in mm -hmm. uh, Inman's uh, thing a couple of weeks ago up in Vegas and um, talked to a couple of the new home builders and they're like, yeah, we don't even consider it contingent if the buyer for the seller's property is one of the I buyers because we know they're gonna there's no once they're through inspections there's no other contingency yeah that's awesome that's really awesome uh, I love it I uh, now you mentioned and and I know you kind of have a strategy we had talked um, a couple of weeks ago about for uh, turning one of these deals into multiple of these deals beyond even just working with the the seller immediately um, do you want to talk just a little bit about that? You mean as far as the cross sale agent? That yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. The cross sale agent thing. Yeah, we just had one. We've actually had two now in the last 30 days, but I had one I was working on specifically a listing and I ended up with, with an offer on the property and it had a contingency. And that was the good news because that house had a contingency behind it. 
And so they made me an offer less than list price with a double contingency with like a 26 day closing. So I was kind of bummed because I'm like, I, we really can't take this as the seller. They got to find somewhere. And then I had another showing that afternoon and that agent called me and said, hey, my clients, they want to write an offer. You know, what will it take? And I said, the standard line. Well, I know, it'll, I know they'll take full price. So you're welcome to send that over. And then, um, and then she said, oh, and they, they are contingent. And I said, oh, okay. She was, yeah, I'm meeting with them tonight to get the listing paperwork, work, paperwork signed to put their house on the market. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. That's not a contingency. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hope right now. I said, hey, have you heard of this company called Open Door? And she's like, oh, yeah, those guys, you know, that whole thing. And I'm like, hey, I'm just saying, why don't you submit to them? And she told me where the client's house was and the price point. I said, I bet that offer is going to come back close to what you would sell it for. And if you client accepts that offer, then we'll accept your offer really non-contingent. 9.37 that night. And I only know 9.37 because I didn't see it till the next morning because it was past my bedtime. And so I see it. And she's like, hey, Kenny they got an amazing offer from these guys. They will take it. Will you take our offer? I said, yep. When you write the offer, here's the date that my seller would like to close. And we picked that date. Why? Because I knew they had up to 60 to 90 days to close with the iBuyer. So we actually got to close on the date my seller wanted to, not when the buyer originally would have wanted it. to. And it went just as smooth as could be. And now that agent's like, what's this course you have? Like, I need to learn how to solve <laughs> And the reality of it is, you know, she took the 1% is what she told me. I didn't see her ER, but that's what she told me. And then got three over here. And in 42 days, that whole thing was wrapped up with no stress of a contingency, of showings, of all that stuff. So she did. When you look at the whole package of what her commission was on that deal, I mean, for 42 days, I mean, it was a 460 and a 250 sales price. I mean, she that's wasn't rad. unhappy. Yeah, that's rad. That really and more is. Importantly, and more importantly, the client loved it. You know, one of the things that, too, just to mention, we talked about inspections earlier, is, you know, Open Door rates their business and their growth on their net promoter score. And Eric Wu is very serious about that. So they send out surveys and they want to know, would you, would you use Open Door again? And would you tell a friend, family member, a loved one? And they're nine out of 10 right now. And that number seems to be increasing because they keep getting better at the consumer experience, which is really what their goal is. So as an agent, knowing that kind of pressure is on us, we've got to step up our game. <coughs> yep. We've got to get competitive. We've got to figure out ways to help a seller sell their house as easy as possible, meaning you know, helping them with rehab, which a lot of us have done for years. We have referrals. I just funded my first rehab for a client. Um, and I added a fee and put a lien on the property and we got it sold the first weekend. I made extra money on the deal and we got our full commission, but we had to help because they didn't have, you know, it's all in their mm -hmm. equity. They, they didn't yep. have the $6,000 for the paint and the carpet and what needed it. And so I'm not saying every agent can do that, but it's solution based thinking. We got to, we got to do things a little bit different. You know, the, the NFL money is, is gone. I think, I think things are changing. Yeah. Um, and, and not that we all haven't worked hard, but I think there's, there's, I think it's safe to say we could step up our game as an industry. And that's really the mission. And I hope that, that we conveyed it is, you know, I'm not pro I buyer. I'm not any of that stuff. I'm truly pro consumer choice and agent and really unifying as an industry. And that's where our opportunity, I mentioned CDP earlier, because I felt like that unified us as an industry on how to go help the consumer. Didn't matter what brand or any of that you were with. It just said, how do we go help the consumer? And I think we're kind of back in that where we need to get educated as an industry on, on how to go serve the consumer and use this as a tool, how to talk about it, how to message your database, how to use it as an open house, how to use it door knocking, expired, canceled. There's so many tools that this thing provides. It just, we got to get over that first hump of that they're the enemy. They're kind yeah. of a front of me. I mean, I don't, like I said earlier, if they go away, I'm cool with it. I just don't know it's going to happen because people are saying, you know, they're not making money on the flip. And I'm going, who gives it? Who cares? Right, right. No problem. Like, if you spend no more time thinking about that and go call five people in your database and have conversation with them. That's, you know, that's what they're sitting around in their boardrooms struggling with. How do we get in relationship with these people? Yep. Over the internet, you know, in the mail, on a billboard. 
because the agents have it. So that's what they're trying to figure out. And here we're worrying about stuff we can't control. Go strengthen these relationships. The opportunity, I I keep saying it, but it's truly, truly massive when you really think about having a a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, have your own guaranteed offer program. You know, call people. You'd be amazed if you just, you know, like I said, we never went to the kitchen table before with anything but an offer to put their house on the market and hope it would sell. There was no certainty there. There was really no control for the seller. When you walk in and you say, I'm going to go get you a couple competitive offers as well as a go to market, you're the, you're the hero. Like that's what they want. And if anybody listening has a house that's been on the market for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and you have I buyers in your market, go request an offer. It's a lot easier to go call your client instead of having a price reduction change, say, hey, I got an offer for you. This is what it looks like. And if it's low, it still helps the conversation because they, mm-hmm. by, by the second, third month, they start going, yeah, maybe that's where the market is. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that's a perfect segue. And I, I got to, first of all, I just got to say that whole building relationships, providing value. I mean, that's what we preach every day. I mean, really, truly this group and, and this um, set of community is really all about that is, is that, you know, relationship building that sort of concept. So I'm totally behind you on that. Um, but it seemed like a good segue. Tell us a little bit about uh, the course that you offer, the certification that you offer. Um, just tell us a little bit more about that program. Yeah, man. So it's been, uh, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't on purpose. It wasn't like I was sitting around here in my office trying to figure out stuff to do, <laughs> but we started, you know, I started speaking on this and teaching this originally through KW and, and really because I was getting hammered with it out here in the Phoenix market. And so it made me have to keep getting better because I kept getting asked questions about it. Um, and then I partnered with a guy named Dan Noma a Jr. here in the Phoenix market. To put it in perspective, last year, his team, he closed 3,500 transactions. He was second in our MLS. He works with the institutional buyers, a lot of the off-market stuff. <coughs> So we kind of decided to team up and get on a, on a mission to go empower agents to create a better consumer experience. And by empowering agents with this data scripting messaging, we put together a program called iRealEstatePro. Real Estate Pro. And the acronym for that is IREP. So iRealEstatePro.com is the, is the website that you go to the training portal. And basically what we did is we just put together, um, you know, a private Facebook group to share with members. We've got a, um, a, what we call an iBuyer website. So I created a website a couple of years ago called OfferDepot.com, which OfferDepot was meant to be like Trivago or Expedia to travel, hmm. where we were the aggregator. So we'd go out, get all the offers, put them together. So from demand of that from agents, because Inman's done about six, seven stories on that now, um, we put together a white label version of that website. Because I really believe that agents going forward need to have buttons on their website that says, you know, buy a home, sell a home, get an instant offer. So we bring that into the program as well as about 150 different pieces currently of scripts, different marketing pieces. So I give them all these different pieces that we've used in geographic farming, you know, from, you know, why does everyone want to buy my house? Um, You know, and then we go in and answer that question, confused on selling in today's market, like a lot of different things like that that are built into the program as well as the ongoing training. We do buy box updates. We have each um, market now with a buy, bar, a buy box update. So you can go in and click on your state, your market. It'll show which I buyers are in there, links to get to them. Um, so we put this whole package together and then it's on <coughs> Because the one thing different compared to CDPE is that this isn't stagnant. Like this isn't a one and done. This thing is changing so much. So me and Dan are doing live Q and A's twice a month. Um, buy box updates, just what's happening out there. We're getting members to share marketing. And so really just kind of created this hub of, of iBuyer teaching and education so that agents could get these tools to go out and, and really, you know, we call it surviving, but really thriving in this market. First is just survival, get to understand it, kind of level the playing field, and then how to take this as a tool to the next level. So it's, it's uh, about three and a half hours of content right now. So you go through the modules, they're all like broken down into say three minutes or 12 minutes. Once you complete the certification, then that unlocks the labs and the buy box updates and all that. And then in the labs is where all the, the good stuff is, the website template. Um, oh, we also include four different um, net sheet aggregators. 
So basically the agent aggregates all the offers, then we put it, we have sheets in there where you can dump all that information into. So it really becomes your offer presentation versus a listing presentation. So you can have up to 20 offers. We have a side by side, a side by side with two and a side by side with three, depending on how many I buyers you have. And then you just take that simple sheet, you put in the data, it's a one page presentation basically. And you just say, here's the different nets, here's the closing dates, um, which, which works for you. Um, you know, here's how many showings we estimate, like we put all that together. And then, um, and then there was something else I was going to mention, one other tool in there. But anyway, it's pretty loaded. It's a lot. Either way, it's a lot. I don't know that it's anybody would be able yeah, to I mean, take all that in. That's awesome. I love well, it. I'm an agent. So like, I don't, I mean, we're out doing this stuff daily. So we continue to, to update and, you know, we've been in uh, Tucson, Denver and Vegas so far this week uh, teaching. So we're getting members throughout the country and really just try to unify as an industry to go out and better serve the consumer so that the consumer doesn't have to choose between us and I buyer, they just choose us because we're letting them know, hey, we work with all this stuff, no problem. You know, right. it's no different than if you go back to like 2018, there were some of the biggest tax law changes arguably in the country. The question would have been, did I have to go figure all that out? Or did my CPA call me or send me a video and say, hey, Kenny, you know, I don't know if you're confused with all these tax law changes. Hell, I know I am. The great news is I'm your right. CPA. I'll sort all this out, go sell some houses. It's that same message. We just need to you know, let our clients know that we've got control of this. If it's happening in the real estate market, I'm all, I'm all over it. Absolutely. That's, I love it. I love it. So, you know, I always say this, it's, uh, you, you know, your job as an agent, um, whether you have a contract or not, is that a consumer will call you before making any real estate related decision, no matter what. Selling a home, buying a home, someone else, their friend is selling a home, their family members sell it. It doesn't matter. Any sort of real estate decision, they should be calling you because you're that concierge. That's like you said, going to figure it all out for them. Um, what's the? What's the that. that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Like yeah, that's <laughs> uh, you know actually funny enough how that came about was um, I was talking with a, a longtime friend, an agent out in Minneapolis. And he was talking about how um, he had provided all this value and, and talked to this guy about this deal. And um, the, the guy, it was an estate sale. And he was the, the executor and like handling all of this and so on. And somehow the attorney and the estate attorney and the estate attorney's realtor got him to sign paperwork sitting with the attorney because they scared him into whatever. And a friend of mine, the agent was for this was saying, you know, I, he was so frustrated because, you know, he had, he had helped this person and become really good friends. And he thought the relationship was really great. And I said, well, the relationship was great, but did you position yourself as that expert? Did you, is it, you know, were, were you the concierge for this person? Would this person have not made a decision without you? And he's like, obviously he wouldn't have. He, he made a decision without talking to me. I said, well, that's, your goal at the end of the day if you haven't done your job unless you've gotten to the point with that person where they wouldn't have even thought about signing that had they not called you first um and that's where you know that came from is is so that say, story so say it again because i got to write it down quick so you, your your goal as an agent whether you have a contract or not is that they will call you before making any real estate related decision gotcha Gotcha, man. No, I, I like it. I, we're always looking for additional scripting or just how to talk to your database. And that's short and simple. But that's really what you're saying is, you know, you wouldn't sign a legal contract without, you know, an attorney if you were buying a business or doing something else, anything to do with real estate. You know, just give me a quick call. I'll help guide you through all your different options. And, and they feel better. I mean, the ones that we've actually sat down after doing our videos to our database are like, you know, we, we knew that you guys would be on top of this. We feel so much better now. Um, we've heard of those guys, but I'm glad that, you know, that, that we can use you still. Like they actually feel like, um, so, you know, you just got to get the message out so that the consumer knows. It's no different than walking into new construction without you and now you're not registered. You know, you just got to educate people that this isn't, um, you know, it may sound easy, but it's still, 
real estate. You don't want to leave money on the table. You want to make sure they get negotiated through the inspection. You know, one of the tricks that we like to use too, I say tricks, one of the props that I like to use when we talk about equity, because again, I'd rather them go to the market, not go I buyer, by the way. Mm -hmm. There's more compensation. I get a sign in the yard. I get internet leads. You know, I get houses, <coughs> all the other stuff. Because we just carry, um, so I just like to carry $20,000 with me in cash. And then I just set this on the table. And we like to remind them of what this money actually, what their equity actually looks like. Because when it's, remember I said chips in right. Vegas, it kind of feels like that. But when they see, and this stuff looks real, for my own safety, it's actually fake money on Amazon. But it's, it's a lot of fun because then they start going, you know what, our daughter does need a car or we could pay off that credit card or, and I get competitive, man. I, I want, I want my son in the yard and I want to go help him, you know, with the real estate. But sometimes the I buyer offer is that good where it just doesn't make sense. Well, I might as well get what I can and, and still keep the relationship. Cause to me, the most important thing out of all this is keeping that relationship. Cause we know statistically, everybody knows 278 people. So if I do a good job for somebody, odds are they'll go tell someone. And that's what I want because, you know, sometimes we got buyers, so that doesn't even affect them. Sometimes you get, yep. you know, buy box where it doesn't even fit them. So um, the relationship is key and upping our game in that category is important. You can't sit and I think they're going to call you first when they can just click the easy button and get an offer. And all of a sudden you're cut out. Yep. And by the way, just a quick stat, I think it was September, open doors specifically, just one eye buyer bought 1,700 properties throughout the US. Guess what percentage of those 1,700 had a real estate agent representing them? I know, I know this. You told me this number. Okay. It was, so it was, number. it was, it's super low. I remember guessing way higher than, I remember guessing like 60 or 70%, and it's like 20, right? It's 10%. 10%. It's 10 oh my God. Which, which, which that means that. 1,530 sellers sold direct and quite honestly, we'll probably never use an agent again, or they'll yeah. start with an iBuyer and then go to an agent. And I want to correct that number. I want to get that number to 50, 60% or more, obviously that the consumer goes, well, why would I just go get one offer? Or why would I give my email and phone number to three or four different iBuyers when I can just have my agent go do all the, the legwork and then just present it all on a side by side. Yep. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, one more quick question then I'm going to end on something a little controversial. So quick question is uh, first, how much um, for the course itself and where can folks find out more about your certification program about IREP? So we make it easy. Uh, um, so the, uh, the course itself is 499 and that, that gets you the three and a half hours of content. And then, and then the $49 recurring is a monthly recurring and that gets you into the, like the Facebook group and you know all the, the lab and everything we talked about that's constantly being updated. And like I said, the recurrent is just because we have to keep doing this stuff. It's not like I just put a program and I don't have to right. be done. Um, and so for you guys, well, I'll get you a coupon code you can give out to your group to take a take hundred bucks off of that. We just awesome. want people to get in it, honestly. If you don't love it, cancel. We're not holding you to anything. But you know, we believe that once you understand it and start implementing it, it'll be the cheapest thing you've done to create more business probably ever. And you'll become a raving fan of, of the program, which is really what we, we hope that this message is not about 49 bucks a month. It's about what it's going to do for your business. Cause if you look at it as an annual investment, I mean, it's, you know, under a thousand bucks. If it, we have a couple options in there, but point is that, uh, yeah, we tried to make it, you know, packed with good stuff and, uh, and, and consistently being updated because the technology is doing that. So Perfect. Perfect. And they can get uh, more info at irealestatepro.com. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah irealestatepro.com. We'll get you a code. Um, I'll use your, uh, your initials AIC 100 so that um, you can take a hundred bucks off. I'm sure you'll get that out in the message, but yeah, we'd Absolutely. love to see, you know, and, and here's the thing is even if you only have an eye buyer or you don't have an eye buyer, this education, we've got a guy in a state that has no eye buyer. That's absolutely killing it by using this information because it turns out it's not just consumers in these markets that want this, want this convenience and control. They're all over. So there's money out there. If you can go get your own and you can start presenting your client with an offer <coughs> to go to market or have a local investor who you partner with who will make that offer so you're not the bad guy, but then you can relist the property. I mean, 
there's a ton of ways to use this tool. The margins don't have to be like traditional flipping margins to still make money in this. Yep. All right. So I'm going to leave us, iRealEstatePro.com. I'm going to leave us on one uh, slightly controversial note. And this is where I want your feedback, Kenny. I'm not even going to bug you for a response on this one, but I want everybody's feedback because I think we're all uh, sleeping on this, like I said at the beginning, but here's to the extent. So we know we, we have a uh, fiduciary responsibility to the sellers, right? Right. We know that their house gets put on the market there immediately is an offer available for them that we can go find and we can go get an offer, cash offer on the table the minute that the property is listed. So now I would put it out there and say, hey, there's a standing cash offer. It's actually your fiduciary responsibility to bring these offers after the property has been listed. Now you're talking about doing it beforehand and there's a lot of of reasons that we can and we should do it beforehand but let's yep. just say we get to the point of listing i actually think that at some level you have a, a fiduciary responsibility to present um these cash offers because they are offers on the property that are out there now uh, i've had a couple folks say to me that oh well it's not a an actual offer on paper and we'll say okay some states or verbal offers are allowed but let's back up from that let's say we go that step and it is a force you have to have it in writing well, all that means is that Open Door, OfferPad, Zillow, any, any, the only thing these guys would have to do to make you, forcefully make you present that offer is that anytime that property goes on the listing, like that, that property is listed, goes on the MLS, they send you an email that says, hey, here's an offer. We have an offer for you, right? That is 10 minutes of scripting. So let me ask, every one of these groups could, within 10 minutes of scripting, force every agent out there to present i buyer cash offers to all of the people that they're working with that are selling their home so i've got to ask if that were to happen are all of you agents ready to start presenting cash offers tomorrow do you have all the information that you need and know everything that you need to to start doing this my guess is you not you don't i'm just saying so I would just say, look into this course. Uh, I real estate pro definitely look into a little bit more. And if you don't look into it, um, I apologize. I'm sorry. Cause I you really should. Um, we're definitely going to have some more information uh, in the blog. We have some old blogs that we've written as well. Um, we're going to be doing our best to try to keep up on this and, and give you some info, but I think your best bet um, in terms of, you know, really getting yourself set up for this is to head on over um, check out Kenny, check out iRealEstatePro.com. Um, Kenny, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate you taking all the time. Uh, any, any words to leave us on? Yeah, man. I just, you know, I, I would just would not, not wait till you lose a client to sign up and get educated. Um, you know, I've got a guy here in our local market, you know, his name's Rick. It's a guy I know. He, uh, text me and say, Hey, can, can you call me? I called him. He's like, Hey, what's that I real estate thing that you have? I see it on social media, blah, blah, blah. And I, I told him, I go, what's going on? He goes, well, I have a client. He goes, I didn't even consider him a friend. Went and met with him, did a listing appointment. He's going to buy, he's got to, you know, he's going to sell and buy. A um, couple days went by. I didn't hear from him. A couple more, finally get back in touch with him. And he says, you know, Rick, I uh, actually sold my home to Zillow. Well, that was the good news. <laughs> The bad news is he went and bought with another agent and he said, you know, Rick, honestly, I, you met with me, you, you gave me everything. I, I trust you. And then I went and checked my Zestimate and it said, get an offer on my house. So I just tried it. I actually liked the offer and I just didn't feel that maybe it was in your best interest. So I bought with another agent. So I tease him. I actually talked to him yesterday. Said, I'm telling everybody the Rick story, like, don't be a Rick. And he laughed and he's like, it's all right, dude. I, I, it's the truth. I, it's what I was. So, I just encourage you, don't wait till January when you get a bunch of Christmas cards returned in the mail at no longer at this address to, to go, what was that thing we talked about on Agent Inner Circle? Like, hit this head on. Um, you know, think about your marketing that you can use this for. And at least get educated first and then make a decision if this is for you or not. But the consumer is demanding and driving this. That's why these guys are multiplying. And I would uh, highly recommend taking the first step, get educated. Get more knowledgeable yourself, not what you've heard. And sky's the limit, man. It's it's going to be an awesome 2020 for I know our IREP members and uh, and I think the industry. If we really 
you know, get educated, get focused on, on how this is going to impact our clients and how we can use it as a tool. Because I really want to use this as a tool in our toolbox before we truly become a tool in their toolbox. And that changes the game big time. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kenny. Um, oh, I greatly you. appreciate your time today. Uh, I'm sure all the Agent Inner Circle members thank you as well. So thank you to everybody for joining us. I greatly appreciate it. This has been Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. Signing out.